Hello everyone and welcome along to the initial reaction to Rangers signing of striker Danilo from Feyenoord. I am joined tonight uh, to give his thoughts on the signing by Ross Chalmers. How are you doing Ross? I'm very well Craig, thanks very much for having me. It's, uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here to be able to talk about Danilo, it's been uh, one that's been rumbling on for a few weeks. Uh, it's one that I'm not sure I've I seen is actually getting over the line, so I'm absolutely delighted to be here to to talk about the signing. It's always exciting talking about a, a new Rangers striker, and when it's a Brazilian striker as well, it just ramps up that excitement even more. The the deal was announced today, £6 million being the, the rumoured fee, um, significant wage packet as well by all accounts how excited are you by by the prospect of the new arriving from Feyenoord ahead of the new season yeah very excited Craig I think it's a I think it's a bit of a statement signing I think I, I've said this before about a number of players this summer it shows a real sign of intent from from Rangers as a club and as a board that they're really really backing Michael Beale here I think this is probably the the striker that Michael Beale was referring to all those months ago. Months ago, sorry, when he he said he had someone picked out ready to go. Uh, this looks to be the guy because you know, like you said, a rumored fee of five six millions with any add-ons. You know, that is a massive fee for Rangers. So I, I'm delighted with it. I think eventually you get to a level in Scotland where you have to start paying these fees to improve the squad. And I certainly think we're at that stage at the moment when we've lost key players in the summer, players that have done well for us over the years. We're going to have to try and plug the gap now. We're going to have to bring in guys with equal level of quality or better. Yeah, and I think Danilo has that. Any kind of scout report on him or any journalist talking about him, analysts talking about him, talk about uh, you know, essentially, you're probably not going to get a better striker for the for the money we've paid in terms of Danilo. So, look, I'm really, really thrilled with it. I think, I think it's really exciting. Uh, based on the other forward players we've signed this summer, Serial Dessers, Sam Lammers, Abdallah Sima, there's a lot of quality in there. A lot of really good competition now, but Danilo is certainly the the kind of standout signing from the summer. And I, and I think Scott said it on the Sunday podcast uh, last week. It's a mar it's a marquee signing, isn't it? So yeah, delighted with it, Craig. We've said the word exciting about five times already, and we're only three minutes into into the podcast. And I'd, I'd expect if I'm listening to this podcast, I'll, you'll hear the word excited a lot more, which is um, I just I guess just highlights the magnitude of this signing for Rangers, and perhaps a little bit of the the surprise as well that that comes with it, given the fact that that we had. Already signed Cyril Dessers. For, his fee was rumoured around the four and a half million plus plus add-ons. Mark, we're, we're looking at ten million pounds plus on, on two new strikers. Ross, is that a, is that a surprise to you? And is it um, is it or is it one you expected? When I when we first spoke about the fact that there needs to be a, a big rebuild this summer, we knew that um, Alfredo Morelos was departing. Uh, we knew we thought that. Antonio Cholak might be heading out the door, which he obviously has. He's, a, he's away to Parma. Now, Kamar Roof has, I think, uncertainty would be being kind around his injury record and how many games he can play this season. Are you, first of all, are you surprised that we've spent that much on, on two strikers? And, and secondly, how big an impact do you think that will have on our, our forward line heading into the new season? I am surprised. Craig, yes. I think I was on the podcast early on in the transfer window and uh, I think we were very, very close to announcing the signing of Serial Dessers at that point and the fee was obviously rumoured to be around three and a half, four million. And uh, at the same time, the fee rumoured to be for Danilo was maybe four and a half, five million at the time and I felt that is just unrealistic. I cannot see Rangers putting that amount of money into two players. Um, now, I was wrong, clearly. <laughs> Rangers have decided to go and do that. And I, I look, I always get a wee bit uneasy when we're spending fees like this, uh, just because you're there's. I feel like there's maybe a lot of pressure on the players because we don't put a, you know, we don't sign players of this value all of the time. It's not something we do every summer, right? But clearly, the board feel that we're at a stage now that these guys are worth it. I'm sure they've been thoroughly covered by the recruitment department, analysts, Michael Beale himself. So overall, I, I'm surprised by it, but I'm certainly not taking that as a negative. I'm going to take it as a positive. I, I, I'm really happy the club have, have proved me wrong there. In terms of the impact, 
I think it, I think it will make a big impact because Daniel looks to be a striker that is very instinctive around the box. Um, he looks to be able to do a wee bit of everything. Um, he's not necessarily just a number nine that's going to play in the last shoulder. He looks to be someone that can come in a wee bit, play. Uh, I've heard uh, and I've read in various reports that he is someone that could potentially play as a 10 as well. So it looks to be a, a, another player with that kind of versatility, that flexibility within the front three, but one that's probably going to play every game he's available because of the, the, the money on the table. So yeah, massive impact in the front line. But yeah, I am surprised, but I, I'm, I'm happy about it. It's, it's a it's a good side to be on, isn't it? When you're surprised and you're wrong and Rangers have brought in a player of this quality. So, yeah, really, really good. It absolutely is. And we'll, we'll potentially come on a bit later on to our thoughts on if that fee brings any additional pressure with it and any additional expectations as well. Just interested in, we've spoken about the, the fact that we potentially thought well, we've signed Serial Dessa, so we'll not sign Danilo. We've now signed both. How good is it, and Ross, you've touched on a bit in terms of the, the attributes that, that, that we can see from Danilo um, and the and the clips we've seen and reports from Holland um, and even in the, the pre-season friendlies that he's played so far for Feyenoord. We've seen him score a couple of, of good goals as well. How different are these two strikers, do you feel, and how important is it that we have those attributes that we can kind of almost switch between or, or utilise in, in, in different games? I'm not. I'm not sure they're completely different. To be honest with you, I, I'll be. I'll be honest and say I haven't dug down like deep into the data or I watched them enough to give a real assessment of them tactically. I think that's something that will come with time when they play for Rangers. But anything I have read about the players, I don't think they're drastically different. And it maybe comes along that Michael Beale has a certain profile that he wants up there. Sam Lammers is a bit of a different one for me. He seems to be. You know, signed as a number nine, but he really will play as a number ten. He's so good both sides. So maybe Daniel and Dessers are being bracketed as kind of similar profiles, and then you've got guys like Sam Lammers and Todd Campbell that can play a certain way, and then you've got Abdel Asima, which seems to be a wee bit of a wild card in that front line. Seems to be able to play in any role, and you know, kind of his, his physical attributes are, and, and you know, his height, his stature is something that I think we might play off. So. I'm not, I don't think they're vastly different, um, I'll be honest with you, but I think my real assessment will come when we see them playing for Rangers and we see them in this Michael Beale system. I always think it's quite strange nowadays when teams play two strikers uh, or they try and get two strikers into a team because most teams just don't play that way anymore. So I'm actually really, really interested and excited to see you know, a potential bearing of, pairing of Danilo and Dessers. I think we've seen against um, Hamburg last week that it was Sakala and Matondo. So there's a there's a massive difference between the kind of quality there that we'd be playing as a two. So, look, I, I'm really interested to see how this one works out, Craig, because I, I bet like some of the other signings this summer, you're not really sure about them. You've maybe not seen too much. Obviously, as time goes on, you see them in training, you see them in these preseason games, you start to build more confidence. You can kind of... Mm, recognise what kind of role they're going to play in this side so I'll have a better idea when I see them in but I'm certainly excited about Danilo and, and I think he could potentially strike up a really interesting partnership with Dessers. Yeah you've touched on there the um, I guess the, the tactical approach that Michael Beale might take and the potential for playing two strikers up front we've seen some variations of that across the pre-season friendlies we've seen um we've seen that th three across across the front i guess as we're used to seeing in, in previous seasons we've seen one player up top with two number 10s in behind and then we've seen two players up top with what one number 10 in behind in some cases we've seen all three in the one game are you expecting that we will we will pick one and be more likely to stick to one or are you expecting that sort of variation i guess um throughout the season I think it's going to be a variation, Craig. I think we, we've seen it. We've sat Ibrox together and watched Michael Beale and he'll set up one way where he'll sit with a, he'll start with a central nine and he'll play two tens behind and within 10 minutes he's changed it uh, and he's and he's went to two up front with one behind. So I think it's, I think that's what he's wanting. He's wanting players that can bring variety, uh, fluidity within that front line because you can imagine as a defender that would be very, very difficult to defend against when you're not really sure of the role that these three up front are playing in. So I, I think we're going to see that throughout the season, the variety. And I think that's the kind of profile he's went for. He's went for players that are dynamic. They're not necessarily just one type of player and that's the way they're going to play. And I think we've had, 
we've had players like that uh, in the last couple of seasons, like Alfredo Morelos. We all knew, we all knew what Alfredo Morelos was good at, um, but that was the kind of striker he was. He was very, very physical, and he used that, and that was his kind of main attribute. Of course, he could do other things. I'm not detrimenting the player, but that was what he was good at. Very similar to Antonio Cholak. He was very much a, a kind of old style number nine. It was all about goals for him. He wasn't really going to get involved in anything else. And and I think ultimately that's why we've seen Antonio Cholak move on this summer. And uh, not necessarily because he's a bad player. It's just he doesn't fit what Michael Beale is looking for in that forward line. So I think it's going to be a variety. Uh, and I think again that that's really uh, we've said this before, really exciting for us as fans of the season because you're you're not really sure where players are going to play, where they're going to make that impact. And and I think that gives Michael Beal flexibility when he's picking the team as well. He'll be aware that he's going to have to have rotation throughout the season to compete in all fronts. So if you've got players that can play in different positions and that versatility, you're winning as a manager. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And yeah, definitely variety, Craig, in that front line. Yeah, we're obviously speaking about the, the forward line in this podcast, a new striker coming into the club. It's, it's only natural the end of last season, we saw Alfredo Morelos depart the club. We saw Ryan Kent leave the club as well. Recent weeks, we've seen Antonio Cholak depart. Incoming wise, we've seen um, Abdul Asima, we've seen Sam Lammers, we've seen um, Cyril Dessers, and now Danilo. Do you view, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, which you may or may not like, but do you view that switch as an upgrade? Um, in terms of our forward line going into the new season? This is a difficult one because I think a lot of people would say it's very, it's premature to say it's an upgrade because we haven't seen these guys in a competitive game as of yet. So I think when you, when you look at it that way, it's very difficult to say it. I personally would probably say it as an upgrade. I think for what Michael Beal is looking for in his Rangers team, I think he's now got players that suit that. He's, he's brought in profiles that suit how he wants to play. And I think we all know over the last year with Alfredo Morelos, it was a player that really didn't want to be here. And we weren't seeing the best of any uh, of, of him anymore. So certainly based on last season, I think it's certainly an upgrade. That's maybe quite harsh on Antonio Cholak because I think when he was available, he'd done really, really well. Uh, a really good ro- goal return in his first season for the club. But of course, he's moved on. So yeah, I think overall as an upgrade, Craig, but you know, you could be coming back to me in two or three months' time and everyone could watch this podcast and say, what are you talking about? They've definitely not delivered. So I appreciate it. Maybe a wee bit premature. But on the face of it, on paper, I think it's certainly an upgrade for Michael Beals Rangers, yeah. Yeah, I think I would, I would have to agree on the face of it. It'll be really interesting to see in the coming weeks how that how that plays out. Um, he's 24 years old, a Brazilian um, striker, albeit he by all accounts, is, is looking to switch his national allegiances um, to Holland, which will be really interesting. I, I believe he came through the, the youth systems in Holland before um, making his way to to Feyenoord. Does, coming from um, a European country um, that's not too far from Scotland, does that take away some of the settling in time, I guess, or do we still need to be, be patient with him coming to a new country, a new city, a new club? I think there's always an element of patience you have to have with any signing. Uh, so he'll get that. But I don't know if you agree with me on this. If you're if Rangers are paying five, six million pounds um, or euros, whatever that translates to for a player, he, prob- he probably has to hit the ground running, to be honest with you. It, it's quite harsh, but that is a lot of money for us to put out. We've all read the, the rumoured salary package. I think that has been... Um, denied by the club, you know, the whole idea of him doubling his wages and earning around 40000 a week, that's been denied, I believe. So maybe it won't be as much as that. But I think when you're putting that much money into a signing, that, that pressure is going to be there. So the settling in time will definitely be less for him. And that is just the way of it. That's not just uh, playing for Rangers. That's any club. If, you, if you're bought for a lot of money, the fans are going to be on you and they're going to expect things straight away. So... Look, I won't be I won't be too um you know annoyed with him if he doesn't play well in his first couple of games, but he'll certainly need to show it early on, uh, just because of the fee that, that Rangers have paid for him, Craig. Yeah, to be honest, I agree with with you in terms of it increasing the pressure. I always feel a bit sorry for guys like that. It's not his fault that we've paid that amount of money. Well, I suppose it is his fault in terms of he's he's shown the quality of a player that, that he can be and that we feel he that we feel he can be fine or devalued um, at that much 
that valuation is not his fault, but it does come with the added pressure, especially um, given the anticipation around his signing. It's been one that's rumbled on for a few weeks as well, um, and it's, it'll be really interesting to, um, to see how it plays out. I'm always a fan of when these players get an early goal because I feel like it just settles everyone down. They can get a goal in their, if they get a goal in their first game and then they maybe go one or two without getting one. Fans are a bit more lenient on that front. The trouble is if they go two, three, four games without getting a goal, it's difficult for it's it's, it's difficult for fans to um keep their patience, I think is the the fair way to say it. Um just before we round up on this podcast, Ross, I wanted to touch on a point around how this transfer, much more than any other transfer that we've seen uh, with Rangers recently, has played out in the media um, and how the, it's been interesting the different tactics that have been employed as well by the, by the two clubs. Um, Rangers have generally tried to keep fairly, fairly quiet on it, giving out the minimum information. Michael Beale's maybe been a bit loose-lipped at times in post-match press conferences, but at the same time, he's only... Um, confirming an interest in the player but he reiterates that it's Feyenoord's player. The interesting part of it I think comes from Feyenoord's side and um, the way that they have, because I don't believe Feyenoord fans are delighted with the fact that he has been let go or sold. Um, I believe the Feyenoord board have been coming under pressure recently around letting players go for too small or for fees that are too small or not enough money. Um and it was interesting the way that the the finer directors were coming out and saying um, no is also an answer. Um, when asked if if Rangers bid was acceptable, I think that was around the five million euro mark at that point. Um, we also saw that they've been briefing the Dutch media to say he's doubled his wages by going to Rangers, which suggests that they are trying to justify a reason as to why he's he's moved from finer to Rangers. It's been really interesting how this one's played out hasn't it yeah i can't remember where the original link came craig i don't know if it was a scottish source or it was a dutch source but yeah this has been going on for a while i think maybe the last week it appears to me that fire nord have been unhappy with how much has been out in the media so potentially they aren't the one that's leaking it someone is leaking it from within the club and they're unhappy with it because we had seen all the reports at one stage, the Rangers were very, very close to a deal. And then within a couple of hours, you had quotes from the director saying there that, that, you know, no is an answer. So I always find it interesting when you find the Scottish side that releasing the, the kind of news reports about the, the, the deal being close. And then within a couple of hours, it's kind of, you know, backhanded away as if it's rubbish. I, there was something definitely going on there. I think especially from the Fire Nord side, they weren't happy with this being played out. But we've seen this earlier on. We've seen this in January, didn't we, when Rangers were linked with Morgan Whitaker at Swansea and it was being played out in the media and, and I think both sides weren't happy about that either. So it is interesting because I think a lot of clubs, I think that it's a bit of a, you know, it's an unwritten rule between clubs that you don't discuss transfers and you try and keep it all behind closed doors. But this one's just been out in the public. And so was Cyril Dessers, if you remember. There was a, quite a lot in the public about that. We've seen it about Jose Cifuentes. I'm not sure if all the, the stories are re regarding Jose Cifuentes were accurate at certain points because I'm not really sure much was happening with that deal. So, look, I think it's something that differs from deal to deal. Uh, sometimes you'll see leaks. Sometimes you'll just see the, the, the guy holding the scarf. So... Yeah, it's maybe something we just have to accept, but it has been a bit of a strange one. And and to be honest, I'm glad it's over now. I'm glad he's just a Rangers player. Absolutely, it's exactly the same here, and very excited to see him in a, a Rangers jersey. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us on this initial reaction podcast. It will be a name that we say over and over again on this podcast at length, and hopefully in a positive way in terms of the number of goals he is scoring and the contribution he is making to the team. Uh, if you've enjoyed the podcast, please drop us a like. It really does help us um, progress and help to grow the channel. Remember to subscribe to the TII YouTube channel. We've got a huge mix of match day content, of live bulletins during the week, um, of B team content, of women's content across the board. We've got a, a, a huge range across the, the, the new season. And make sure you don't miss out by toggling on those notifications once you subscribe. And you'll get an email or a, or a wee notification every single time we go live or upload a podcast. 
Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And until next time, goodbye. Thank you.